me to be here. It was certainly an honor and a great experience. It was um, interesting to notice my own process on how I would look at work and how it would speak to me immediately and uh, then look a little bit more at the details of how it was made and, and what the artist had to say about it. But I do have to say that it was usually the initial impact as soon as I would look at a slide of a, or a, an image, um, it would just really pop out at me and, and speak to me. So it was an honor to, to work with Marsha and put this show together. So I am going to announce the Best of Show winners. And I can find a piece of paper. <laughs> so the, um, should we go from the top down or the bottom up? Um, go from the bottom up. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually how they do it. <laughs> okay, the third place award, sponsored by Fiber Arts Now magazine, was 1,133 rolls by Lily Lou from Paducah. <laughs> Rightfully earned. The second place, sponsored by former mayor, Mayor Bill Paxton, is Spring is String Theory, Volume 3, by Candace Hicks from Nacogdoches, Texas. And first place award, sponsored by former mayor, Jerry Montgomery, is Red Rhythm Bird by Selena Grigori from Fort Collins, Colorado. So as a little entertainment for you all, Larry and I do music together. This is my husband, Larry Bo. He's been a musician for a long time, back in his California days. <laughs> We've been together 26 years, and he offered to play music when I would read my poetry then, and I don't think I appreciated at that time what a gift that is to have somebody accompany you. So I'm most recently very much interested in living a layered life and how we can accomplish a lot when we layer everything we do on top of each other. So I wrote a piece, I made the journal, this journal is I recently um, created, but this is sort of my current manifesto of living a layered life. The shibori technique, which is what I use in dyeing silk and wool, is based on manipulating fabric. The fabric resists the dye and creates a pattern. I always use at least three colors or shades of one color of dye on the cloth. This creates movement and depth. The art created is complicated, simply. With my wearable art, my intention is to create opportunities for you to interact with the art, to become the art, and enhance your own self-expression by transforming your experience into a dynamic, performative artwork. For me, art is an interactive experience. With my life. Rather than react to life, it comes from the gut. I prefer to respond, which comes from the heart. When I live in that brief pause between reacting and responding, I'm living a creative life. For instance, when working on a piece of fabric, if I spill some dye, rather than react, toss the piece, I respond and consider how to work with this new phenomenon into finished art. I began as a writer, writing the truth about my experiences, no matter how painful. As my children became teenagers, I became a visual artist. While much thought and contemplation goes into visualizing a piece of art, the actual tasks for completion are somewhat routine and can be 
completed in the midst of chaos. Wrapping, dyeing, steaming, rinsing, ironing, and then finishing the edges to create truly wearable art, which is vividly layered and intrinsically contains the stories of my life. In my memoir, The Garden Girl's Letters and Journal, using a form of organic discussion, I created an interactive performative dialogue. My wearable art is my expression of the visual facet of this layered conversation. Because of the amount of energy involved in the creative process, this energy is still present in the finished art. And the wearer of my art is only moments away from my story. Ultimately, my hope is that my art inspires others to ask questions. This is the first step to becoming an artist. Asking, what if? I'm not a big believer in talent. Not that it'll get you anywhere. What produces results is desire and the willingness to take risks. Making art, I say, especially for parents, can get you through. So this is an old poem that I wrote, I guess in 1986, and I just kind of, it's kind of resurfaced. And I wrote it in response to my daughter, who was living with her dad at the time, writing me a letter wanting to know how to deal with her life, how to fit in how to make the right decisions. So my answer to her is an answer to a child's cry. You are unique, darling. Unique at this very moment. The way you dress, the way you write, you are an original. There are no duplicates. To compete with. You are unique. And you have a unique relationship with God. You are meant to be eternal, to live forever. So listen. Listen to the distant echo calling to your soul. Be yourself and get. And this is it. There are no more tomorrows. Get that this is it, and the journey begins. The race is on, the choice yours. The goal, faith. You know, the don't worry, everything will be all right, faith. Get the faith, get the don't worry, and you're home free. Thanks for what you've got. Imagine what you want, and you're home free. And then your real life begins, your life of growth. Because when you're growing, you are living life to its fullest. And the growth is where it's at, darling. So take a chance and grow. There's no need to worry, remember? You've got the faith. You got the, don't worry, everything will be all right, faith. Being here now is the passage to growth. The passage to growth is the way it is. The way it is, is this is it. Get that this is it, and the journey begins. The growth begins. And through it all, through all the change, who you are remains the same in the presence of change. And the gift you give is being committed to doing good and living love. Love you lots, Mom.
trusting me and allowing me to have input on this show. It was amazing. So enjoy. Thank you. Thank you.